Okay. Um, I suppose um, Mohsen asked me if uh, I need an introduction. I don't know if uh, those of you who don't know me put your hands up, and then Mohsen maybe will give an introduction, <laughs> or maybe one of the st one of our students could give an introduction. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. By me, <laughs> to myself, or to the to the, to the lecture. <laughs> Well, uh, my name is Nasrin Saraji. Um, I've been teaching uh, in the school for the past five years. I graduated from uh, the school about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, one of my uh, diploma tutors uh, was uh, Mohsen Mustafavi, who today is sitting as the chairman in the school. And since um, I've been teaching at the AA. I've also been uh, teaching at, um, as, a, as a visiting uh, uh, professor at different uh, universities in America. On the other hand, we have a small office in, uh, in Paris that um, continues to produce uh, projects. Uh, very few of them have been built, but um, we haven't uh, stopped uh, producing the projects, nevertheless. The first project that I built was the American Center, the Temporary American Center in, um, in Paris in 1991, uh, which was a small competition. And uh, it was actually the beginning of the practice in Paris. Since uh, we have finished uh, a small housing project of about 48 units uh, as a rehabilitation and renovation, in the suburbs of um, Paris, in the northern suburbs of Paris. At the moment, we're working also on um, another um, housing scheme uh, renovation again, this time much smaller, 21 units in, uh, in Paris itself. We have a small project in the north of France, uh, which is a small entrance, about 1,300 square meters, to a, to a route of a museum and a sonography project which is hopefully going to be finished in about two years' time. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are some <coughs> projects that um, are in the domain of uh, what one calls today public arts projects, which are more on the theoretical side, therefore uh, it's suggestions, uh, not to any given brief, uh, but as ideas, which uh, we're working on. And um, the project that I'm going to be talking about was um, perhaps uh, for us one of the most significant projects that we have uh, worked on in the past uh, sort of 10 years of the office being in, uh, in operation, which was a school of architecture in, um, in Tours, uh, which is um, a city in, uh, in France uh, sort of in the middle of France, if you like. Some of you probably know it. Uh, which was a part of a project uh, that was commissioned in four phases, actually, as a chain of um, projects uh, in order to decentralize uh, the, um, the, school of, the schools of architecture which are mainly based in Paris. And therefore, as a, as a, as a polit policy of decentralization, uh, what the French called the 11th plan of, um, of decentralization in terms of schools of architecture and urbanism, this um, project sits in within that context. So um, 10 years of practice after, after a little bit more, maybe 12 years of practice after coming out of the AA, and uh, five years of teaching uh, at DAA uh, was a perfect position to be in uh, to work on a school of architecture, especially since, um, I don't know if you've had, um, you probably haven't, but you will have the experience of working on a project where not only you know the program, but you've also, uh, you also have had very, very specific references to the spaces as both a user and um, in, in, in my case and in the case of the office as both a user as a student but also a teacher uh, and an architect um, proved to, to be a set of um, uh, 
a an experience which uh, which was quite fruitful for us in terms of the way that we began to at least reformulate and ask ourselves the question of um, form and strategy in architecture. So um, I decided not to show a cross section of um, of the projects. Um, uh, in the past 10 years because first of all there would have been a bulk of projects which would have been uh, almost impossible to go through in any depth in, uh, in one hour. Secondly, I thought that um, at this time that uh, we're, uh, <coughs> we're questioning a series of issues in the school that Mohsen has actually brought up in terms of um, not a series of suggestions but a dialogue that uh, happens between uh, the students and um, and the teachers. Uh, it would be a good ex good example for me to to use this project as uh, as something that we could continue to uh, to dialogue. Um, as was, for instance, last month, uh, this question of um, uh, at least a series of talks or dialogues about what the uh, what the unit system has and it has had and uh, where it's going and where it could go. Uh, therefore, that's, that's why, I fa in fact, I, I decided that it could be a good project to, to give this one hour lecture on. It was a project which, um, the School of Architecture was a project which we worked on um, solidly for about two months. As a result, um, there, were, there were various, um, models, uh, study models, plans, uh, sections, drawings, uh, discussions that we went through through these two months. The um, critical time of the project was in fact um, uh, divided into a series of discussions and uh, juries that we set up for ourselves in the studio, which allowed for, the, for certain issues to be, uh, to be both exposed but also experimented on. As a, um, again, as an experiment, we tried to keep a diary uh, of, um, of what we had done. I can't read the diary to you because I've never since had the time to actually translate it into English, but um, I'll just take you through um, specific dates, which signifies the way that we, uh, the way that we program the project. Uh, also, the team that worked on this project was quite uh, significant and important for us because um, I decided to work with uh, some of you may know Jean Atelier, who's um, who's doing a series of seminars, um, has been doing a series of semi seminars since last year, um, and um, is a philosopher who we uh, uh, consciously integrated into the team in order to see what the dialogue could have <coughs> in terms of forming, forming the project. And he's the one, in fact, that, um, that kept the diary. So we started by, in quotes, um, of course, quoting Rem, do we want to win this competition or not? And um, I suppose that most of you know this quote from the uh, diary of the Jussieu Library, uh, not the Jussieu Library, but the Bibliothèque Nationale that um, Rem brings into a set of um, conversations with, um, in terms of going through the project. Of course, juries, not architects, decide competitions. But first, there's our own invisible judgment. For each project, there's a beyond, a domain where no jury will follow. So. Within the competition system in France, um, this is a very um, uh, true and literal um, sort of um, uh, condition that uh, everyone is faced with uh, in terms of these competitions. There are a series of questions that are asked at an ideas level, which, um, which we try to, to um, to go beyond and therefore not only come up with answers but also insinuate other questions as an extension of those questions and ideas. But um, the dilemma is the fact that um, not only you have to extend this questioning and this, uh, these responses and answers through the project, 
but you also want to win the project because of the fact it's the only way that you're going to actually construct. So the dilemma is how far do you take a project uh, in, terms of its, in, in terms of its ideas and where do you stop for those ideas to be, to have a concrete form and uh, the possibility of construction. Specifically because of the fact that the regulations are such that um, uh, you're constantly penalized by um, the response to a series of questions. Therefore, the aspect of derogation and uh, going beyond a series of questions and allowing for those questions to begin to imply other strategies for the project becomes very sensitive and important. Between the 16th of February, uh, 97, last year, and the 20th of February, we um, scrutinized the program of the, of the School of Architecture by reading it at different levels. On the 20th of Febru February, after a series of meetings that we had had with the, um, with the uh, mayor of uh, the city of Tours and all the responsibles for uh, all the technical services and the architect of, um, of um, the consultant architect of Tours uh, and obviously the other uh, the other um, architects that were competing with us. We came to the conclusion that the program was actually asking us to give them architecture. Now, whatever that means, which, um, <coughs> which meant that the program was not, or at least we translated it uh, to our benefit to say that the program did not only ask us to give them a school of architecture, um, which was taking into consideration the regulations, but also allowing the School of Architecture to begin to um, influence a master plan that um, uh, that the area was um, the area of the site was demanding us to reflect upon and think about. Okay, great, thanks. So, um, the, first, um, the first thing that we did actually with the project was to uh, make a model, uh, a one to 1,000 model of the area of the site. So the frame that you see here on, on, on the uh, right hand side <coughs> is, um, or the left hand side actually, is uh, the the area of the site which concerned us in terms of its context. The main area of the site, in fact, for us, is only this area here. So that is the site in itself for the School of Architecture. Nevertheless, this whole area south of the river and um, <coughs> therefore um, from this route to this road, this road, and uh, the southern edge of the river, is in fact the site whereby uh, a whole enclave of buildings uh, and series of buildings are going to be uh, commissioned for the, the extension of the University of Tours. The um, <coughs> bits and pieces that you see on the model are in fact the, the buildings that are already constructed on the site. So on, the, on this axial, um, or the center of the site, if you like, you have the faculty of law, uh, which sits completely on axes um, uh, to where was one of the questions that we asked ourselves. And therefore, qu question number one, the, um, the raison d'etre or the reason for this axiality, specifically because this plan belonged to a master plan which had been aborted uh, three years before they put this one into place, which used to have a building on the edge or uh, on the other side of the axis. So when this building was built, basically there was something to come here, and this axiality meant something for whoever was designing this, uh, this uh, the, fac the, the law faculty. The restaurant, the student's restaurant, um, 
a tiny little housing scheme, uh, a 16th century farmhouse, which has been restored, restored to its uh, original form and shape and is sitting on this island. And within this island, uh, there, there are no buildings to come because uh, that becomes the, if you like, the icon of this site here. Another series of um, housings, uh, housings for students, um, a small engineering faculty, and other smaller buildings which were to be uh, rented to different industries and offices in order to bring in some external financing to the, to the site. Now, this site, this site, this site are empty completely. The regulations and the um, larger context of the urban plan, plan is asking us to think about the alignment, but also think about the way that we position our building. Since it is going to be the first building that is going to be built, that it begins to set a precedent for the way that one would then begin to, um, uh, to articulate this central, um, the central um, circus, if you like, in the midway between the beginning of the axis and the end of the axis. We left the study of the uh, immediacy of the site at that point, uh, having looked around us and having extended the territory of the site to what I said, these edges of it, we began to look at the evolution and the development of the city of Tuok, which is actually up here, uh, or at least the, the uh, 15th century, 16th century, 17th century city, which uh, to, to the 19th century city, which finishes here, and uh, the 20th century city, which comes down and uh, prolongs itself towards the river Cher which is this one here. Now, from our site, we have a very, very strong silhouette of, uh, of this, which is what you see on the section on the other side, over here. So from our site, over here in the middle, to there, which is the extension of Tour as the, as the city. Then we realize that on this side, we almost have nothing, um, nothing to, um, to look at because it's uh, agricultural fields right on this edge here. On this side, we almost don't have any. Uh, uh, we almost ha we also have a flat plain and a <coughs> and, uh, and a field, and it's only at the bottom of the um, south, so most southern si uh, extension of our site that we begin to have a topography which starts going up in the section, which is there in the section, and of very, very small scale houses. So no longer do we limit ourselves to our edge there, but we begin to reach out to what, especially because of the fact that through the regulation we see that um, the height of the buildings are going to be dealt with in such a way and manner that, um, uh, that our context is going to be that further context and not really the, the edges of the, uh, of the, um, of the site itself. <coughs> we also, uh, through that plan there, we also um, do a series of sketches to see the different densities that we're dealing with in terms of, um, in terms of the uh, context, the surrounding context, and what could be the possibility of the density of this, of this site uh, uh, that we have um, to put the School of Architecture in. And the School of Architecture is also, this uh, specific School of Architecture is also to be centered on urban studies and not so much architecture in terms of design itself. So it's called the School of Architecture and La Ville uh, or the city in, um, uh, in Tours, as opposed to the other four, one Mar la Vallée, which uh, uh, Chumi won uh, a few years ago, and another school in Compiègne that uh, Siriani won just uh, just three months before uh, we entered this competition. So um, I'm just going to show you a couple of, to, to um, somehow situate you in terms of our thinking and the way that we, we begin to see how we can begin 
to bring in to, to our project um, the observations that we had uh, on the site into the project and then from then on begin to work with it. In parallel to that, and that's why if you've read the events list, I've put uh, a few pointers, for instance, pedagogy as program and form giver, on the par in parallel to the way that we're observing and looking and uh, working with the site, we also have the program which uh, somehow gives us information, gives us information in terms of the way that they want to change the, um, uh, the policy of teaching and the policy of pedagogy within this uh, 11th plan of education, architectural education, and the architectural and territorial education in France. So the first thing that we begin to look at um, in terms of the site is, uh, first of all, we have a site which is filled. Therefore, um, up to about one and a half meters uh, below the grade level of the site, which is a filled site, uh, we arrive at, uh, we touch water basically. The program also is asking us for, um, for uh, parking areas, which in effect they are asking us for these parking areas to be, uh, to be open parking. Nevertheless, uh, we, uh, we think that it would be um, within the site that we have, it would be difficult to arrive at the number of parking spaces that we want without it taking a mass surface of the site. And we also have the problem of water. On the other hand, we want to raise our building as much as we can within the height limits that we're given uh, in order to be able to reach out to uh, the territory of the edges of the site as, uh, as I just explained to you. So we started by looking at a way of forming the ground in such a way that we could at, in parts begin to take the building up and in parts begin to, uh, to bury the car park. So this is, uh, as you see here, this is the way that we begin to cut into the ground in such a way that we raise so one part of the, build, uh, the building and on the other side, Joel, sorry, do you, do you have your pointer? Because mine, I think my, uh, the, the battery is going. Maybe this is better. Oh, great, thanks. So, um, what we do is that um, we basically start our foundation plan at, a, uh, at about one meter ten below, and we reserve ourselves about 40, 50 centimeters uh, not, to, not to hit water. And we begin to build up the, the ground from then on. So as you see here, that's um, in fact on the, <coughs> on the back of the site, we begin to deform the surface in such a way that we, t we touch ground or grade level. In the front as well, we pick up a layer of the ground and we somehow create a moat between the road and, our, um <coughs> and the site. And back here, we're completely up above grade level. As we get to the top, then, uh, I'm sorry, this is, back, uh, this is upside down, but, um, but if you, well, they're upside down in, uh, in relation to one another. So, <coughs> so this basically is back here, okay? Uh, what happens is that we begin to be come towards the edges of the site by starting from the center as the mass and the body of the building as opposed to starting from the alignment edge. Now, I have to insist on the alignment in terms of um, the, um, it's sacrilege to, um, to, to not be in conformity with the alignment, um, at least in, at, first of all in Paris. Secondly, every other uh, building regulation that uh, one gets in terms of these competi competitions, you have a very, very strict alignment um, uh, regulation in it, which allows you only to start from the edge of the ro road and building towards the center of the site. And every regulation from then on is based on the regulation of the alignment. Therefore, height-wise, volume, 
the, the, um, the distance from which you can begin to um, uh, fill in the programs of the building only starts from the alignment edge. So one of the first questions that we asked ourselves was how to deal with the question of the alignment, nevertheless um, not um, put ourselves in a disadvantage in terms of a built-up um, edge where we have open sites all around us and how to allow for the, um, this central sort of point of the axis to be open to some other form of, um, of development for the other buildings that were going to come on the three sides of us as opposed to building the alignment and then from then on just allowing for the alignment to be developed on uh, both sides. The first, um, the first real question was to what extent we could actually um, deviate from the, from the regulation of the alignment. So through the questionings that we started um, doing uh, by asking the, the, um, the office of the mayor and the consultant architects was to what extent can we actually hold on to the alignment by not being out of, the, um, out of line with, uh, with the regulations. So basically, as far as you come and touch the alignment that you build in beyond that, you're, um, you're fine in the text, the, the text of the regulation. Nevertheless, the alignment constitutes something like about 90% of the edge. So if you actually have only 20% of the mass of the building, it's impossible to, um, it's impossible to be in, uh, in line with the regulation of the alignment. But then we said that alignment could also be landscape alignment. Therefore, if we begin to build up our edge, one as a soft edge and the other ones as hard edges, then this would begin to be contain the site. Nevertheless, we wouldn't have a linear building here. The reason for that wasn't only to uh, go away from the regulation that we were given, but it was at the same time that we were thinking about the way that the building sits on the site, we were also building uh, different study models of what the spaces of the School of Architecture are and would be and how they would function uh, within the program, within the given program. For instance, we had small models, autonomous models, which were, let me just go to that and see if, it uh, doesn't show it here, but, uh, um, we were basically looking at the different parts of the program, such as the library, such as the studios, such as the um, exhibition hall, such as the lecture hall, such as the workshops, and um, <coughs> the different uh, studios for, uh, for painting and uh, uh, the computer rooms. We were constructing these models as uh, bits and pieces, and we were trying to see what the bulk and the mass of the building would be if we completely abstracted the idea of the alignment. So in a way we were constructing the ideal situation for, uh, for each part of the program and then trying to begin to bring them together as the final form which would then sit on the site. Um, one of the ideas for us was to how, how would w one enter the School of Architecture? Uh, we looked at um, four or five situations. Obviously, the one that won the, the case was the situation that we have here. Entry, main entry for the public, at least, between the lecture hall and the exhibition hall. Nevertheless, allowing for the exhibition hall to extend itself to a piazza that we were, uh, we were suggesting that would be or a, <coughs> or a public square that we were suggesting would be in front of the exhibition hall in order for the exhibition hall to begin to unload itself, which is in a way, in not in a sort of formal way, happens sometimes or at least at the end of the year uh, when we have our exhibitions here, even though the, 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 the space of the um, exhibition hall doesn't extend itself, nevertheless its extension is the, uh, the square in front. On the other hand, we were thinking that the weight of the library 
and the library as, as, as a place where um, most of the students um, gather or um, at least it could also be on my behalf, wishful thinking, uh, something that would, that would announce itself on the weight of the exhibition and the lecture hall. Therefore, the library begins to find itself juxtaposed on top of these two spaces. The main core of the building becomes all the studios and um, <coughs> what are called the studios of the first and uh, premier cycle, which is the first cycle of their studies, which is basically first year and second year. The extension of that becomes uh, second and third year, uh, second, third and fourth year. Uh, the diploma students have one block, autonomous block to themselves, and the um, research uh, or the PhD students are right on top of the, um, on top of the um, building with, uh, uh, with almost no connection to the other studios except internally. And uh, a couple of uh, bridges from the, from the uh, diploma block, if you like, or the, or the fifth, fifth year, the troisième cycle, in fact. I'm just now. What I would like to, I don't know if you see it there or not, but it's small, it's the panel of the, I have a series of um, uh, slides which show basically the final panels of, um, <coughs> of the competition. Uh, obviously the form of the drawings, the placing of the drawings uh, are given to us in terms of the panels in order for the panels to be better judged. And uh, we took a, upon ourselves to, um, take the photograph of the 1 to 1,000 model and integrate the site into it in order to show how important it was for us, these edges that um, I was talking about earlier on. Now, um, Okay, um, I'm just going to take you through a series of di diagrams which are going to show the, um, the volume of the building as we go up um, the, the building. And on the other side you basically have uh, uh, a collage of the photographs of the models uh, worked on with the elevations. Therefore the elevations we drew took photographs of the model and began to um, integrate them into one another in order to give a truer uh, sort of um, uh, picture of the, of the body of the school as opposed to just the line elevations. So the, on, the, on the ground level, <coughs> basically, the extent of the, of the building, as you saw it before in the, uh, in the larger plan, is our worries about the alignment. So we come right from the center on the ground and we come to the edge of the site, the major alignment. And over here, we come on, um, on pilotis and we come to grab the site over here because basically these two are the um, edges that we have to come and hold to define the site. So here you see <coughs> one floor up which we're still under the pilotis and we don't have the, um, which we have given. I'll go through the program later on, but uh, for the first uh, year, second year and third year students, we have also created right here underneath the, their studios an open workshop area where they could experiment with uh, larger models and larger pieces of uh, installations which could be in open air, but right in underneath the studios and therefore with a connection which they have directly, which is the night connection, in fact, to the studios. Since um, the School of Architecture closes at about five, six in the afternoon, the students have their autonomous um, uh, entry and exit f to their studios at different uh, places. And underneath uh, this, which is actually the extension of that uh, open area, which, uh, which I was showing you as an extension of the exhibition hall, becomes an area of installation and uh, experimental model making for the first to <coughs> third year students uh, on the ground plane. On the back, you see here the volume of the workshops 
and um, <clears throat> you also see the administration uh, on these two levels here. As we go up, the bulk of the building gets, um, <clears throat> gets um, larger and larger, and basically you have all of the studios at the second level, at the third level, in fact, of the building, all together. Now, if I just go back here, you'll see that the volume of the, uh, the, volume of the, um, the library at this level, which is the first level, is still separated and detached from the main uh, bulk of the building. Whereas when we get to the oops, second level, which, uh, which becomes the distributing level, meaning the uh, ground plane, if you like, or the first plane of the studios, it becomes also distribution to the library, to a terrace, and to also the, the diploma um, block. And as we go up, we start finding the mezzanines of, um, of the studios, which begin to uh, be sitting uh, in the void of the double height of the studio, which is here, plus um, the other mezzanines that begin to uh, relate through ramps and staircases, the studios of the um, first year, second year, and third year together. Sorry. As we go up again the building, we find the research uh, block and the diploma block connected again through. The library becomes completely disconnected at this area because the only way that you can actually enter the block of the library is from the second level onwards into the library and then it becomes an autonomous block whereby the circulation becomes only uh, proper to the, to the library. So control of entry and exit through the library is from the second level onwards, but then um, the circulation, it has its own circulation inside. So <coughs> by now, we know that this is one of our alignments. This is the other alignment, the block of the library, the entry, the main public entry, Another entry which is from the, um, which is from the uh, square in front, uh, the experimental workshop installation area, which is again the extension of the, um, the uh, exhibition in this area. Uh, the crossing of these two routes basically underneath the library becomes the main atrium and the circulation space of, um, which I'll show you later on in the slides, of the, uh, of the school. So, <coughs> so, can you get this uh, left one, please? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, therefore, here we have um, the uh, lecture hall and the exhibition hall. The exhibition opening onto the square in front of it. You from, the f from the street, because we have created this moat, which brings you down from the car park through a ramp onto the square and into the entry here, or you arrive and you go up the steps, up a few steps into the, uh, and you're squeezed almost between the, between the volume of the exhibition and the lecture hall into the main atrium space, which is the crossing of the circulation on the ground level. Uh, the workshops, as you come in, in fact, from this uh, sort of crossing of the circulation, you immediately in front of you have the restaurant, the bar, and the cafeteria, which looks, which has with its southern terrace, looks back onto the uh, back of the site and it, it is uh, adjacent to the workshop area with all the classes and the, uh, which with its mezzanine level for larger objects and uh, larger pieces to be made. The students union and the areas, the offices, find themselves right next to this. Um, so the crossing area of the ground, uh, at the ground level, the crossing area of circulation gives uh, access to restaurant, workshop, print room and print shop, 
and the students' union. From then on, you have the major staircase, which then elevates you through the four levels of the, of the, um, of the school. Here you have various sections which show you, um, and I'm just going to go so that you can see. So, no, oh, sorry. Come there, and this one. So on the back, as I was saying, here you have the um, workshop with, um, with the terrace of the cafeteria onto the s southern edge of the site. The studios on the <coughs> first level start with um, the first year, second year, third year, third and fourth year here, plus the diploma there. So here you see the um, <coughs> side of the lecture hall. What is that? Oh, they put a picture of me in there as well. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, this is a complete surprise to me. I have to see you about this. Uh, so, um, so the library is actually sitting on top of the lecture hall with uh, with the small um, entrance, which is in fact not a small entrance because it's about at the opening of it. We have about six and a half meters uh, width <coughs> opening into but being squeezed between the two volumes of the lecture hall and the underneath the weight of the library. <coughs> the library <coughs> uh, block, which is sitting right up here, in fact, if you see those tiny two little columns which bring the weight of the library onto this uh, side of the uh, lecture hall, which is the um, which is the main structure, comes and su is superimposed by the wall of the books, which in fact uh, is also the, uh, the huge uh, structure which is carrying with the plates and the different mezzanine floors, uh, the structure of the library right down to the ground and eventually to the, to the, mm, to the car park. So once we enter um, from in between the lecture hall and the exhibition hall. We enter right underneath the, four, or the, the block of the library, crossing the, um, uh, the circulation from the larger entrance, which is mainly the student's entrance, or the uh, private entrance of the students from the back of the building here. So this is really the hall as, um, with, the, with its staircase elevating us to the four floors. Now, I'm just going to take you around uh, the various, um, the various um, sort of um, parts, but also through the plans, show you what the organization of the building really is. So from, <coughs> from the ground level, we come to the first um, floor level, which is over here, in fact, which all the concentration of all the offices are. Therefore, the density of the offices and all the administration, plus the offices of the tutors and the professors and the visiting professors, are on the first floor. Somehow detached from the main body of the school, being the studios and the library. Then as we go up to the level above that, which is in fact the first level of the studios, we arrive into the first, second year studios, the third and fourth year studios. We also have the distribution from here, the circulation onto the void of the atrium, the distribution to the level of the library, but also the first level of the diploma students. As we go up, the, um, the plan completely begins to become a free plan with only its objects as closed areas because it's an open plan for all the liberal arts and, um, uh, and also some seminar rooms, but also the computer room, but also painting and sculpture and, um, and the photographic labs. With now the volume of the, um, the library detached from the main body of the building and also the diploma school. As we go up right to the top, 
then we have the void over the studios of the first, second, third, third and fourth year. We have the research lab of the um, PhD students and we have the um, diploma students uh, final floor and the top uh, floor, in fact, the mezzanine floor of the, of, the, um, uh, of the library, with a terrace to the roof for extra um, curricular um, activities, such as parties uh, and so on and so forth. So here you have uh, <coughs> the, um, the entrance and also the print room and the, um, and the reproduction uh, shop, which is on the ground floor, open to public at this level, but uh, open also to the students from the back and their, their main entry themselves. You also have the facade to the, uh, the north facade, which is in fact the facade of the studios of the first, second, third, and fourth. Year. The organization of the studios in the first or second uh, cycle is in such a way that the reason that you see this form here is because we have three different plates and um, I'll, sh I'll try to show it to you on these plans. I, I did take photographs of the, <coughs> of the plans because these are the panels of the competition to show you the detail of those areas but um, they were so washed out that uh, I couldn't use them. So um, in fact you see here the, um, this is the mezzanine, but you see here the um, difference of uh, separation. What, why we did that was to give the possibility of having either a studio with um, you know, about 45, 50 students at the same time um, uh, during a workshop or um, a collective project or create little colonies for them to be able to, uh, to be divided into uh, groups of 15, between 12 to 15 which in a way was uh, the way that, again, it was a reading of the program in terms of the division of the different groups and the number of teachers that we were given, uh, which was beginning to divide the space but also give us a form of um, the pedagogy which was intended in this school, uh, which was more uh, focused onto a unit system and to a group studies as opposed to um, the courses that um, were going to be uh, collectively held uh, for the 45 to 60 students at a time. Now, <coughs> this is so that edge that uh, we come right to the alignment. Obviously, on the first two levels of that, we're, uh, we just have the, um, we have the <coughs> open workshop, if you like, and the underside of the, uh, the studios become quite an important uh, sort of facade to begin to look at the way that we could actually give this room uh, some form of definition. Then on the, <coughs> on the southern facade, not only do we um, start to have just punched openings uh, in order to protect the studios uh, from, the, from, the uh, from the south, but also we begin to work with uh, these openings according to different heights because we have the ramp system right behind here which happens there which brings you and connects you connects the two studios together the studios of um, the third and fourth year and first and second year together but it also gives you at different heights different uh, views and different <coughs> lighting configuration into the studios itself then um, at that junction we also bring in another staircase, which becomes both the, um, uh, the emergency sta staircase, but also um, <coughs> w another way of getting in and out of the school uh, quite freely after hours. Now we turn um, on the model and we come to the, um, uh, it's in fact it's, um, this view is taken right from here. So you have the view of the side of the workshop, the terrace of the cafe, the, um, uh, the administration level, which is here, the lecture rooms and the seminar rooms, which are in this block, which have the same sort of punctuation, at least in the facade, but also in terms of their division um, uh, for the, um, 
on, on the plan. And as we get onto the top level, where we have the open studios, the, uh, the painting, the pho photography, and the uh, more open studios and atelier, and to the top, where we get to the uh, research and the PhD book. As we turn the building, then we are completely elevated, and we have the undercroft of the building, plus the parking, visible from the side. So um, with the diploma block, we completely open the side of the lecture hall, which is, um, which is glazed, as opposed to its um, front, or their for its forehead, rather, which, um, which comes as a, as a closed expression onto the, onto the road. Which then, here you see the side with the, and the library uh, structure on top. I think that's it. Yes, sir. Harvard, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about Harvard. I mean, in terms of its, it, at, at least in terms of its form, both in terms of the spaces or because I haven't had any experience with it. But the American model with the studios, um, again, depending on uh, what school we're looking at, because we did take into consideration when we were designing this, this uh, working on the design, the different, at least the different experiences that we had had, such as Columbia and such as um, such as Princeton, for instance, in terms of the relationship between the studios and circulation and where administration comes as either a support to pedagogy or as, um, as something which is parallel to it and has, you know, is completely away from it. Uh, what was, it is a hybrid in the sense that the idea of, at least in terms of the AA and my, my education, having been, having taught here, was that the idea of studio and work and the project and the students being the center of the school, any school of architecture, was um, we wished to actually put that into some form of, um, uh, some form of evidence. Therefore, from the outside, the public was always realizing um, and again, I didn't show one of the perspectives because they were so washed out that it, it's, it, was impo it would have been impossible to see them, in fact. But um, it, was impo it was important for us to announce the way that the project is an intense, um, is an intense working uh, period. Therefore, 
the studio is being always lit up almost 24 hour over t on 24 hour was one of the uh, one of the important issues that the School of Architecture as opposed to the other buildings around was announcing into its site therefore the studios um, contributing to the main core or the volume of the building the diploma and the research being somehow detached at the same time being attached to it because they you know because of the difference of um, uh, the mass of the production that happens in, the, in, in those areas was something which you know allowed both for the fragmentation to happen but also this uh, the sort of um, hybrid of form if you like to come to the project the the, the if the floor which deals with administration and offices of, um, of uh, teachers, professors, visiting people, again was, um, um, was its idea specifically uh, in the French context and specifically in the um, public uh, sector schools because at least in the, in the European model, uh, because of the fact that the schools are of public nature, um, the way that administration is dealt with is totally different than what we have, for instance, as the model of the AA or the American model. Therefore, there's a very, very heavy uh, area of administration. One of the reasons that we call it the Le Loge is, again, um, which I didn't talk about, sort of the significance of the way that we, we started differentiating. We didn't call our different floors ground floor, first floor, second floor, but we gave them names according to the function that they were, uh, they were, supposed, to, um, uh, they were supposed to put forward. One, for instance, the, the uh, Le Loge is a specific area in the Beaux-Arts which would be the area of thinking just before you would deliver your, your diploma. So it's a closed area. It's completely walled from any other space, which are the spaces of the studios. And therefore, there were a series of ideas that we were bringing in, in the reading of the, not only of the form, but the distribution and also the, um, the, uh, the order that we, would, we were giving to these spaces. So it was, in effect, very much a hybrid of different, um, different possibilities, but um, in order to ask ourselves and allow ourselves to see whether it would be, whether it would be possible to bring the best of you know, uh, certain models to one structure. So the heaviness at the same time, the lightness of the library in terms of at least in terms of its form is the Avery, you know, is the fact that so, so the, 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 the studio, the, the bulk and the weight of what happens, for instance, in, in the AA, in terms of the units, the, the, the way that we give a complete focus to the project is the AA. Then obviously, there are, there are very, very clear also um, uh, mimicking also of the, uh, the juxtapositions that happen which are perfect juxtapositions in terms of the way that the School of Architecture functions. It's, it's, it, at least we, we tried and we hoped that that would come across as well because that's why we juxtaposed the workshop, the, uh, the bar and the restaurant, the student union, uh, the undercroft, if you like, of the library and the entrances into that ground level atrium. So where every th the circulations, you come into the circulation but then you actually are distributed to these areas. I mean, that's, that's what happens. It happens in a different way, in a different um, sort of juxtaposition at the AO. That's one way or another, we're going to go through the bar. You want to go to the other side. Now, if you want to avoid that, you can avoid that as well. There are other, you know, there are different ways of going around it. But the, the, the closest, most efficient way is to actually go through the bar and allow the bar to become that space of 
fusion, that space of discussion, that space of you know, um, distribution. And the model there was because, well, the number of the students were um, also um, very significantly more than here. And the number of students that we were dealing with there were 750 as opposed to 450. Therefore, the sort of the, the, um, the extension of the spaces also is due to, to the fact that we're dealing with uh, different numbers there. Any other questions or comments? Who was it in the slide library that so said to me, can, we grill you, can I grill you today? <laughs> Go ahead. He's not here, actually. Can we get a chance to grill you? Yeah, Andres. No, I know it wasn't you. <laughs> It relates to the larger context of, I mean, I don't actually, what is, I don't think we got lost into it in terms of the working out of the project, but I think that we don't have any either drawings nor uh, any, um, the model being a one to 200 never had the possibility of actually integrating itself into the, but the sm tiny little model, when you look at it, if you come to the Paris office, we'll show it to you, it's still on the wall, it's falling down, but, uh, what, um, what was interesting was to, for instance, the, PH, the, the PhD and the, uh, and the roof terrace becomes an area that um, you begin to completely, through the, the way that the alignment comes and reaches the, the north facade and the, uh, and the east facade, you, you start getting directed towards these areas that are the high density, if you like. So right in front of you, because of the bulk of the bu building sort of pushing you almost towards the, to, towards the north, you begin to see the skyline of the 1960s development, but also right uh, sort of the north facade also gives you the, the emblem, if you like, of Tours, which is the cathedral of Tours, but also the center of the, um, of the development of the city from the cathedral and the town hall and onwards. So by actually going up to the building and beginning to be directed through the bulks and the masses of the, uh, the, and the spaces, you do have the possibility of um, extending yourself. So the, the idea is to constantly be able, being able to extend yourself to, towards the, the edges. And because of the fact that the concentration of the building is in the middle, you constantly, or at least we hope that you do it, by looking at the model, you arrive at seeing that. It's, uh, but you're absolutely right that we haven't got one expression of a drawing or something which shows, if we were, if we were to rework the project, then we would, have, we would have to take those early sketches that we have of the sections and begin to actually implant the building into those, uh, into those sections, which would probably be something that we would say in a jury to somebody. Put it back into the context. You explained the organization of the project in the times, but uh, it seems to me that the sectional part of the project is a much better explanation of it. But I was just trying to know how, how the configuration of the project. I think the, uh, the project is a sectional project. The project didn't have plans before it actually had sections. Uh, I, didn't ex I did not uh, describe the sections. Uh, I didn't uh, explain the sections. But the fact that you actually, if, if you remember through the, uh, because it was easiest to see in terms of the plans, at least here, because they're, they're the panels and therefore the reductions of the panels are quite tiny in terms of going through the sections. But, uh, 
The fact that you have the juxtapositioning in section of the library and the two volumes of the, um, which then they become facades into the central atrium. The fact that the staircase becomes an organi uh, organizational device in terms of the way that it begins to relate to the spaces of distribution on the side, the main staircase, which takes you from the atrium, from the bottom of the atrium, to the different plateaus or to the different uh, planes of the, of the building. The fact that you have um, uh, the, the studios that only happen from the second level and third level as a mezzanine, as, a, as, as one volume, and that the base of that becomes the undercroft of the ground, in fact. That's, again, a sectional consideration. If you're talking about why doesn't the section start waving, then that's a different question. But that's a question to be talked about as well. You can ask that question as well, if you like. Anything else? So JR, you just told me not to let you down, did I? <laughs> Thank you.